Hi everybody, my name is Silo Paniker. I'm the sales engineer with Cyfort. I know I'm the last presentation between you and the happy hour, so I won't spend too much time on the industry, but I'll tell you how our particular approach will actually help resolve and hopefully provide some um, mitigation and optimization. So, by the way, Steve, great presentation, uh, Alert Logic. I, I learned a lot. I, I wish we could have stayed longer for that. Um, so, again, I'm not going to spend too much on the space, but basically, you know, everybody knows the impact of a data breach and the need for malware detection and defense. And right now, as everybody's aware, the IT landscape is transforming, right? Everything's becoming permanentless with cloud, BYOD. So you need a solution to actually account and be dynamic and nimble and account for a changing threat landscape. We all know the impact of a data breach. You know, brand, brand loss in terms of reputation, loss of your crown jewels, right? I think that's been reiterated by a couple of my counterparts. And the new stakeholders, right? Obviously, security is becoming much more prevalent and visible across the C-level organization. You know, as everybody's aware, even CEOs and C uh, CIOs are getting fired over a breach. It's not just a security issue. It's actually a board-level issue as well as an executive issue. So, again, everybody knows the impact of the data breach, right? It's just daily news now with Home Depot, Target, et cetera. So what can we do and how do we really resolve this pertinent and very serious issue? I want to talk about one quick thing before we get into the product. One thing I haven't heard someone mention is malvertising, which is, again, one of the biggest trending uh, areas for malware distribution. So what we've done is, as, you, as you're familiar with a lot of the digital online media, like Huffington Post, as well as Time.com, et cetera, as well as Forbes, they, they actually have pretty good, dec they have s decent security postures, but they obviously outsource their media and ads to different companies. Now, they're actually more susceptible to malware attacks than these companies are, but they're actually linked in to distribute the ads. So you can actually go to a legitimate Huffington Post site and click on an ad which is serving up malware, because it's not that the Times was infected, but their partner, their advertising partner was infected. So we actually set up a crawler network at Cyfort where w what we've done is we actually distributed these m small routers to all our friends and family, and we have actually used, are using residential IPs to crawl the Internet for the top 100 sites and actually see all the ad chains. And we actually notify, for example, AOL, CPXI, AppNexus, all these digital media companies, if there's any malware chains that are being redirected outside of their normal ad chains. So we're actually seeing a big uptick in mal malvertising across a lot of the more common distribution channels. And this is, again, just to give you an idea of what Cyfort is doing behind the scenes for our research. So what is the problem right now with malware detection and forensics? So first-generation APT solutions, there's a lot of shortcomings. Our company's been around for about four years. Our product's been around for about a year and a half. So we've actually been studying the market, and we saw there are a lot of shortcomings on how we can improve this area. So one of the problems is limited deployments. When you're looking at malware detection and zero-day detection, you want cross-visibility across all your ingress, egress points, remote offices, multiple locations. What we're seeing is security is very expensive. So we're actually seeing very limited deployments because these are hardware-based solutions. You have an appliance, maybe at your primary data center, to look at your web traffic, your email traffic, but you're not having visibility across all your sites, right? And those are, again, vectors that somebody can attack. So you need a sim simple solution to give visibility across multiple locations. Another thing we're seeing is the threats are getting more and more armored. With the first generation APT solutions, you know, a single sandboxing solution is not enough. If it doesn't detonate in that sandbox, then basically the solution is not aware of it and it'll just pass through. You need a multi-method detection engine to account for these severely armored threats. Another thing is alert overload. <clears throat> Instead of telling you, for example, 10 or 20 alerts for a single threat, there has to be a correlation on the back end tying back to a kill chain formula, right? Instead of saying, for example, I saw download activity and, and as well as the data theft activity and correlating it back to 10 events, I should say that's a single event tied to one single APT. And as, as you know, security talent is so hard to find with small teams throughout the country. You need to do that correlation and automation in the background to provide that visibility. As well as the final thing is inflexible design. So instead of an appliance model, you need to be nimble in distribution of these solutions. 
we have basically an OVA as well as ISO, and we can actually sit on any platform to basically distribute our software to get visibility across the entire attack service. So what is Cyfort? Cyfort's basically the industry's first scale-out platform for advanced malware defense. So when we say scale-out, that means we basically provide an OVA collector that can be distributed via your vSphere ESX environment to get quick remote distribution and visibility across all attack services. So let's say you're 30 location enterprise. How do you get visibility across 30 locations? You don't drop 30 appliances. You can in this instead drop 30 OVA collectors just to do collection. Yes? What does OVA mean? OVA is basically a virtualized, it's a virtualized inf infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. So if you have an ESX, like if you have yeah, VMware, yeah. VMware, right, it's basically the type of file you would push up. Okay. Yep. So basically we're an image-based solution that's available as an OVA and you basically deploy it through your vSphere and ESX environment. So you can basically have this up and running in minutes, right? So once the solution is deployed, we basically set off a, your network spanner tap on your switch and just start collecting malware objects. So I have 30 to 100 sites and I want visibility into all those locations and I have a virtualized infrastructure, I can push out all these OVA collectors or light software assets to get that visibility. And I don't have to deal with uh, immigration, uh, import export for appliances and basically a lot of the costs associated with a hardware alternative. So again, visibility across multiple locations and one of the problems, one of the benefits of cross visibility is, for example, I could see download activity in New York and data theft activity in Chicago and because our collectors talk to each other, we'll actually tie that back into the single APT instead of saying these are separate events. Another thing is containment. So we're not an inline solution. We actually actually set off a spanner or tap. We're not in invading your traffic or doing any pr uh, blocking of anything. We're just taking a mirrored, ca mirrored copy of all that traffic and letting business carry on as usual. Then what we're doing is working with your existing security enforcement points. So we'll basically take those objects, run through multiple interrogation engines, then give you intelligence to work with your firewalls, your proxies, your IPS to proactively block those, those threats. Then finally, scalability. Again, we can be put on as an ISO on any hardware platform as well as an OVA to work with your existing virtual infrastructure. And one more thing. One, one other thing we're, we are allowed to do is with an OVA infrastructure is we can actually also look at east-west traffic. So everybody can now monitor north-south, but if you have a VDI environment, we can actually put that on your VDI infrastructure and actually monitor east-west traffic as well and correlate that to the north-south. The, north so, again, we're a distributed platform for uh, cross-site visibility across multiple locations. We set off, our, set off a spanner or tap without being invasive. We do behavioral analysis for malware detection. So, again, for zero day, you have to detonate the object. You can't rely on static heuristics to determine if static basically defeats zero day, right? To know something is malicious, you have to detonate the object and see what it's trying to do. So you have to collect every object off the wire that malware can be detected can be embedded in and detonate that object and see what it's trying to do. So I'm going to quickly go through the architecture. So again, the first pillar is collection. Distribute our collectors in as many locations as possible, right? We work off a bandwidth model, so we don't actually penalize you for sites. We actually give you one site license and take across all the bandwidths that you're monitoring. So you might have, for example, a 40 meg link, a 100 meg link, another 40 meg link, so that'll be 180 meg license, right? We just take all the aggregate bandwidth and give you one license. And obviously the pricing is tiered, so the more bandwidth you take on, the less it is. So we encourage distribution of all our collectors for maximum visibility. So you're actually monitoring all your locations. So once we have these collectors deployed, they're just collecting containers malware can be embedded in. So these could be PDF, Microsoft Office, Windows executables, Java, Flash, Silverlight, right, zip files, any of those containers. So there's only basically about 10 to 12 containers malware can be embedded in. So once we take every container, so whether it's benign or, or malicious, we bring it back to our core and we start detonating these objects. So we're running through multiple interrogation engines, so, or sandboxes. We run it through an emulated as well as physical, right? So once it's detonated, we actually see what it's trying to do. We see the registry modifications, files it's opening for read and write access, mutex calls, it might actually make a CNC call back to its control site and we actually control that activity through the network uh, collector. So we let the malware behave as it was designed to detonate on a system 
then tell you all that information by running it through a machine learning engine that's trained to know what's malicious and what's not. So we're basically detonating these objects in the sandbox to get the behavior, but we're learning a machine learning engine to make the determination if it's malicious or not. So the benefit of this model is as malware is changing, we just have to make a machine learning update versus a sandbox update, which is very critical in the space, right? Because if, if there's one, th because we, malware writers know it just takes one modification of the code to bypass a lot of these solutions, we just have to push a quick update out to a machine learn learning engine to account for that. Okay? So once we tell you something's malicious, we present the results in a web console. So next question is, how do I really differentiate between a high severity threat and something that's more relevant to my enterprise? What we can also do is, you can also put in your AV in the solution and the DAT, and we'll tell you by doing a lookup against virus total if it can be obfuscated, right? So zero-day Trojan comes in, we'll do the behavioral analysis, some static heuristics, then use the checksum to go against virus total, and based on if you're a McAfee, semantic, you know, Sophos user, we'll, do, we'll see if virus, your DAD version will protect you, and if it can't, it actually raises the risk profile. Another thing you could do is put in critical weights on networks and assets. So if it's hitting a high-value target, again, it'll raise the risk profile. The, and the final thing is kill chain propagation. How far down the kill chain did the malware propagate? Is it just a download? It didn't affect the system, right? We're all correlating all those events on the back end, or is it reaching data theft stage? So the higher the kill chain propagation is, again, that event will bubble up to the top. So again, in a target-like scenario, we would have actually alerted and said this is the most critical incident because we're actually seeing data theft activity coming out and going back to the same CNC site. So alert overload and prioritization of these alerts is critical when you're dealing with you know, thousands of alerts. Final thing I want to mention is IVP. So we don't, we're a network-based solution. We don't have visibility on the endpoint. So what we've done is we created a script called IVP with, that basically takes all those behaviors that we get through the detonation, and I can run on my endpoint system to verify infection. Because what we're doing is once we detonate the object in a generic sandbox, we don't know if it's going to infect the enterprise system. Your enterprise system, for example, could be hardened. It could have AV on it, right? So to verify infection, you have to do a host-based check, and that's what this does. So a lot of customers like this because without this, you have to do manual forensics on the system to verify infection. Any questions so far? I think I... Did you have something? No? Okay. And one big advantage to our solution is that we have a fully open API. So this is designed to be work with any enforcement point. So it'll work with any firewall, any web proxy, any IPS. We productize this with the PAN firewalls, blue coats, and as well as a lot of the IPSs, but we are designed to provide those intelligence feeds once we get those IOCs and do the blocking on, with your existing firewalls, do the URL blocking on your web proxies, and also push out the snort signatures to your IPSs, right? The last thing you want is another inline solution in addition to everything else you have in your network. Okay, so I want to dive a little bit deeper into our detection engine. And again, this is really one of our key differentiators. So on the inspection side, we're doing the static, static analysis based on checksum to see if it's a known malware. We're also doing multiple interrogation across a virtual sandbox as well as an emulated sandbox. The first generation actually just does virtual. The final thing is we've actually innovated a gold image sandbox. So I can actually upload my images in my enterprise which the enterprise applications, my AV, and actually see the impact of the malware detonation in my gold image, right? So we'll actually run it through the generic sandbox environments and then run it through your gold image and tell you if it's applicable or not. So we're bringing a lot of context relevancy to a zero-day threat versus just telling you that it's malicious. Then on the machine learning side, once we get those ISCs, we're running through that machine learning engine, which again is unique for the space where there's about 4,000 feature sets for any given malware and has to match a lot of those feature sets for us to tell you it's malicious. So we're very key on not telling you about false positives, right? This machine learning engine is very tightly in tune to just look for those malicious behaviors. We also introduced something called chain playback. So this is actually a browser emulator where you can actually take a HTTP link and we'll actually go through the click through and tell you the HTTP chains. And we can actually look at encrypted payloads with this as well, right? So then correlation. So again, we'll tell you how far down the kill chain something's propagated, the intent, as well as the severity of the Trojan based on how maliciously it can affect the system. Is there a question in the back? No? Okay. 
Okay. Um, again, really context-based relevancy, right, will reduce the time to resolution based upon once you get into hundreds and thousands of alerts. So by applying your AV, your DAT, critical networks, OS relevancy, priority based on kill chain propagation, as well as uploading your personal gold images to see the relevancy of impact on your you know, enterprise environment will really allow you to filter on what you need to focus on. And this is basically how a, a typical deployment would look like. You want to put a collector, right, again, a light software asset. It could be, again, a OVA that we deployed through your ESX or vSphere. It can be an ISO that you can put on any box. It could be an HP box, an Intel box, right? And we'll basically have that image overwrite that system. And it will just collect those objects. So you want to put it, for example, in your data centers, anywhere. We can also do email. If you, so we actually do journaling for, to collect your email. So this will work with any cloud infrastructure as well as any on-prem email solution. So we'll correlate against all your email objects as well as your web traffic, right? Then as finally, all, all your remote offices and data centers. Okay, and again, branch offices, any place that you want to give visibility. There's, if you think about a scenario where you have multiple locations and you're very distributed, there's only so many ways to monitor it. And I, so what we, our big advantage is a collector model that's virtualized to take advantage of that virtualized infrastructure and cost effectiveness to get that visibility. Okay, great. So what I'd like to do now is just go through a demo. Whoops. Just do my demo. OK. So basically, this is the Sci4 web console. And what we've done, again, is I told you, we've taken a risk-based bubble approach to the incident. So what you're seeing is a list of infected hosts. And the size of the bubble tells the number of attacks against a target. And the risk bubble is propagating up based on the risk profile based on, again, AV obfuscation, OS relevancy, and the criticality of the target, as well as kill chain propagation. We're giving you a list of malware hosting countries, as well as CNC callback locations, uh, pie charts and trending graphs based on, again, counts. So if we look at this Gipper's example here, I can isolate it and see this varying levels of severity associated with a given high severity threat. Now, if I drill down on this low, I'll let you see that it's a simple download on the kill chain side, right? And it actually was caught by AV, right? So this is an incident of a high severity Trojan, but under the context, it only reached the initial stage of the kill chain. And actually, in, my, in, in case of my AV input, it was actually caught by it. So it, it, somebody downloaded it, but my dad was up to date, and AV deleted the file before it could make the callback. So now if I look at one that's gone through further the kill chain progression. So this is an infection stage, right? So someone downloaded the same Gippers, right? But a the AB was not up to date, so it was actually able to make a callback to the remote site and infect the system. So this actually got a higher prioritization from a risk standpoint. Now let's look at one that's kind of gone through the worst case scenario. So here's one, and I'll expand this for further dissection. Here's one that's gone the full length of the kill chain. It's actually run, reached data theft stage, right? So this is, again, something, again, that'll bubble up and show, say this is what you need to address. So the way we show this event is it might initially have gotten a download infection stage, but what's, as we're continuously monitoring and collecting more data, we'll actually correlate and basically tell you, tie this back to a single incident and make this bubble up. So until you address it, this will be the most prominent feature in the console. So, Here's how we present the data. See, this is one line item in your console. We basically tell you the full kill chain of the event as opposed to seven alerts or six alerts, right? So this correlation in the back end is key for these type of threats. So let's actually dissect this. So again, this is coming from the US. It's actually gone the full kill chain length. It's hitting a high value target. It's hitting its desired operating system. And it hit all four of our triggers on the machine learning engine side. The reputation, so the URL somebody clicked on was known for hosting malware in the past based on threat feeds. The network was a CNC callback we saw from our collectors. The behavior was a zero-day detonation we saw, so we detonated the object. We, saw beha we did behavioral analysis, and it matched all of our uh, machine learning classifiers. And then static, so based on checksum, this was actually a known malware. So now if I'm satisfied with this, I can click Mitigate Incident, 
and here's a CNC IP that I can push out to any of my firewalls to block. Here's a URL I can push out to any web proxy to block. And here's a custom snort signatures I can push out to my IPSs. So we're giving you network containment options for any zero-day event. Yes? Are you using policies, or how are you identifying what high-value assets? Those are user-defined. Yeah. So uh, you can basically put a CIDR address and say, this is, these are critical, like Z, my DMZ will be a critical subnet range, right, versus, uh, you know, like some regular desktop environment. Yeah. And with the, da with the uh, theft of the data, mm -hmm. you know where it went to? The yeah. Theft? Great question there. So the way we're looking at data theft, data theft activities, we're using regular expressions. So you can actually program to look at the payload, and based on string match, for example, credit card information, PII data, we'll see it going back to a CNC site, and we'll match that event and tie it back to this event. How yeah. do you deal with SSL traffic? SSL traffic, that we can basically look at HTTPS payloads, encrypted payloads in our browser cooker, right? But we probably need a decryptor to look at uh, the SSL traffic. That is a blind spot. The question I usually ask is, what is your usual policy for encrypting the traffic? Is it we're seeing that trend that more and more traffic is going to be encrypted, but I think it's still um, most of the traffic internally is unencrypted. We work with uh, A10 blue code uh, for SSL decryption, and then we take it off that. So if we look at, if we dissect this exploit here, yeah, correct. So if we actually look at this, uh, if we dissect this exploit here, we can actually see, for example, the exploit chain, the HTTP exploit chain. It's coming from ChristianForums.com. I didn't write this. Uh, and then if we look at the download itself, we'll actually see, for example, it's an executable targeting Windows machine. It's coming from this URL. Here's the hash associate, associated with it. This is what we use to do a lookup against virus total to see if it can be obfuscated. Here's the behavioral information. So these are actually the detonation results from our virtual and emulated environments. So processes spawned, mutex, registry modifications, and the files opening for read and write access, right? So now what we're doing is we're actually, you can actually then download the PCAP, the sample, the behavior log straight from the console without a third-party tool. You can generate the IVP. That's the infection verification pack. So all these behaviors, we can have it as a script. I can then run on an endpoint system to see if those touch points were made on any system and verify infection. Then, yes? Since it's running in a, virtual, in a safe virtual environment, right. you're logging all that. So it's potentially, it could be theft, right? Well, you're, you're not monitoring the log. Right. Well, well, actually, it's both. So the, the are you watching it run in a log environment? You're talking about the data theft? Yeah. Yeah, the data theft is actually at the network layer, right? The behavioral is actually in our emulated environment. So we're actually marrying those two pieces of information. So we're taking the behavioral information we gather through detonation, right? Then we're actually seeing on the network level with, with our collectors, right? So it wasn't shut down. So you recognized it ahead of time. Yeah. But, but it wasn't shut down. Yeah, and that's a great question. So what will happen is we actually see different events of the kill chain happen at different times, right? So for example, the download activity might happen at, let's say, 9 a.m., right? And it could be dormant for a while. Then the CNC might happen an hour later. And maybe the data theft doesn't happen for maybe a couple of hours. But we'll, we'll basically record all that and tie it back to an event, right? So there could be different timestamps associated with different kill chain incidents. This is, this is not to say this is all real time, because there's usually a gap in time when all these events happen. But we'll correlate it regardless of when it happens. Yeah, how, how long a time, just since you brought it up, how long a time period? I mean, would it go months? Um, it, it depends. It depends. Because some of this malware is also dormant, sure. right? So what will happen is we actually do time acceleration as well in our VMs to actually have it kick in and detonate the object. And that's part of the thing with the armoring, right? You have to know how to trick the malware to know it's in a safe environment. So we will actually do the detonation and get the behavioral analysis maybe before it actually executes on an endpoint system. So you'll know it's malicious, and maybe you'll initially see it as a download activity, and we'll tell you about it before it reaches infection stage. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and here's actually the data theft itself. So here's, for example, all the you know, credit card information, string matching, username, et cetera. And these are basically easily programmable with regular expressions. And I can actually show you an example. Here's the, here's the credit card information for, that we use for this. 
Okay. Great questions. So what we're also doing is giving you a running list of CNC IPs to block, URLs to block, SNOR signatures to use, right? So, when, yes. When your risk is red, the red goes a higher Right. Priority. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We also have something called GSS. So it's a sharing network with our labs team as well as other customers. So as we see things in other customer environments, we'll proactively update this list saying you should be blocking these URLs, CNC IPs. So we like to call this future proofing. So instead of reacting to an incident, you're proactively blocking before you guys get hit. Okay, and one thing I want to wrap up with is we have a monthly webinar called Malware's Most Wanted. So we are, our labs team actually dissects the most prevalent malware in the industry, like Evil Bunny, uh, Barbar. You, you guys have heard of those, right? So it's busy, commercial free. You sh you, I encourage you to sign up. Um, you know, it's really a very technical. Um, it's a very technical session, about 40 minutes, right? We basically tell you the infection, what what the malware can do on a system, how to how to uh, put mitigation steps against it, and why you should be aware of it. And it's, it's across verticals. 